Hello, um, hello, listeners. It's uh, it, it is um. Let's just fucking it, do it, man. Let's it's, just well, there's it. your problem. Podcast, a podcast <laughs> which has slides. Uh, um, except d- this d- one because this, this is not a slides recording? episode. I'm gonna fucking yes. die, dude. Oh my god. I'm Justin uh, Rosniak. I'm the per- uh, <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. I, I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who's talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. Okay, go. I'm Alice Caldwell Kelly. I'm the person who's talking now. My pronouns are she and her. It is zero one thirty local time. I I I caught myself in the mirror earlier, it's and the whites the of my eyes are entirely red. Justin is being he, tormented he was, by he, a cat. He was trying to touch the power supply. Do not touch that. It's very <laughs> delicate in there. Uh, yeah, uh, Liam. Yeah, you, we, we, had, we had some take significant... Take you a little inside baseball here, folks. I have been awake for a very long time. I've been I working know. basically nonstop uh, since I got up. Uh, I've put in a 15-hour 15, 15 day. Uh, I feel horrible. Um, I haven't eaten dinner. Uh, I spent the last hour and a half uh, resuscitating Roz's computer by stuffing an XFX power supply into an ATX case. It looks ridiculous. Uh, yes, I am. And uh, I, I recorded I an episode the... of Ten Thousand Losses. No, you can't put the side panel on. I recorded an episode of Ten Thousand Losses earlier, which crashed and deleted itself. Uh, I am. I am frothing at the mouth with rage. Uh, yeah, happy to be here. Uh, yay, Liam. My pronouns are fucking you. Yeah, Pizza Boy was just uh, investigating about 600 no, watts. No. <laughs> that is 600 watts. Put him out of the room if you have to. Just it's deal not, with the meow. Yeah, that's a good point. It's, it's yeah. a holiday episode. It's a special holiday yes. episode. I don't know when this is coming out. Probably at some point during yeah. the holidays. I have a Santa yeah. hijab on. Muhammad hat on, I guess. Yeah, my yes. Muhammad hat that I wear. <laughs> <sighs> just a festive skull cat. <laughs> yeah, had many many problems with cats today, including milkshake getting out, and then I had to I had to, went went into my neighbor's yard, and then my neighbor and I had to try and suss him out from that yard, and then and then uh, no, he uh, he managed to get out the front of the house, and I had, I didn't he know that. Evaded you for like a half hour. There, solid at least a solid half hour. Yeah, no, he's right now. He's sitting adults. on the keyboard in front of me. <laughs> I am. I, cat is amazing. I love him very dearly, but Jesus fucking Christ, milkshake. Got it together. Got I was, it. Fuck. Get fuck, dude. Get it together. I was, I was warned by June when I brought in these two cats that they were very powerful cats, and they are. <laughs> yeah, but you were able is, to like you know uh, catch recapture. Occasionally, um, yes, I, I I did successfully um, bring mil- put milkshake under arrest and bring, bring him to Kitty justice. jail. <laughs> <laughs> Get in the house! Get yeah. in the house! <laughs> he was not happy. <laughs> it's also very cold outside. Now he's sitting. He's now he's sitting on my lap, and he's very warm. So you wow. know, <laughs> worth it. He's very handsome. Yes. I very I, good kitty. Uh, oh boy. Uh, yeah, this is, a, this this is, is gonna sort of be a lot like episode. the beer episode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, we're not like, as far as I can tell, drunk on alcohol. At least he I'm might not. Be. Uh, no, I am a little. I'm definitely at least a little bit. Alcohol not... too. Sleep deprivation. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm just worn out. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, um, do we have the questions? You, yeah, this is this questions? is the, yeah. We got the questions. There's no safety Q&A. thing. There's no news. Shut no. the fuck up. There's no. There's not even any slides, man. Yeah. This is bare bones podcasting. Uh, well, there's your De- problem. Devin Super can just Ligaria. put up. Devin can just put up whatever images they want. Um, yes. For the uh, for the Devin, final cut. Devin was just... supposed to be on this, but wisely went to bed instead. Absolutely yes. smartest decision. I should have done that too, but I'm loyal. Well, you know no, what? I no, earn my Patreon you. money. Yes. I love you. You're our best earner, uh, Alice. Yeah, you're the you're the, you're the you're the looks of the operation. Uh, also, the brains, also the heart. But Roz and I are basically just taking money from you. Shut up. <laughs> I'm okay. flattering you so you stay awake longer. Mm-hmm. That 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 will work. Do All we, right, we Go, start on an... Amy. Yeah, Amy, some cues. Yeah, you uh, do you um, do you want to start on an interesting question or a stupid one? Stupid. Okay. Stupid. Stupid question. All right, here we go. 
Fuck, Mary, Kill, Robert Moses, oh, Isambard wow. Kingdom, Brunel, and William Mulholland. Uh, all right, so Kill Moses, uh, Fuck, Mulholland, and Mary uh, Brunel. Actually, I, that's also my answer. I would do the <laughs> same, except I would switch it so I would fuck Brunel, because the picture of him with the, like, big chains behind him, you figure he's got to be, like, into some, like, kink shit, so yeah. slightly more acceptable to me. We 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 had we had two fuck Mary kill questions actually. You guys the other are one was freaks. also yeah. The, the other one was you Robert Moses. Freaks. The other one also had Robert Moses, but then Thomas Midley, Midgley Jr. and E. Hunter Harrison. What? Well, when uh, are you I... killing these people? Because if you're killing like Thomas Midgley Jr., like um, I'm slurring that was embarrassing. If you kill Thomas <laughs> yeah. Midgley Jr., it's like it's already too late. He's already done most of his work. Unless you're going back and killing like like. Child Thomas Midgley Jr. and I'm uncomfortable with anyone underage being included in a fuck marry kill. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's also on this it's podcast. The, that's the other mm. problem is that, like, you, you, you know, I, I think, I think, in in terms of this uh, particular situation, I mean, you kill all of them, but it's also funnier to watch uh, Midgley kill himself. That's true. Um, with, I don't know. If he, funnier he, is the right word. Yeah, no, well, he was one of the and he was an inventor killed by his own invention. I mean, okay, that's actually pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, you can't take that away from him. Um, and the like the perfect yeah, capstone because he got like a hat trick of deadly inventions. Um, I think the main thing that you can get from this is that the last thing any of us want to do is fuck Robert Moses because, like, imagine that. I'd say anti-Semitism, Alice. Yes. Is it? Is it really? No, probably not. Uh, mm, yeah, no, cue me another guy, A. That guy strikes me as a guy who did not fuck. Robert Moses, you know Nikola Tesla died a virgin? Robert Moses height. <laughs> That's why it's apt to name Tesla. Robert after. Moses wiki feet. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. 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 I said yes. No. Next I question. Yes. What are each of your favorite sports, if any? None. That's why I don't have a sports podcast. <laughs> uh, favorite sport is uh, American football followed by hockey. Mm. I like. I actually have to um, go. I, I I have to go. I I think football has become my favorite sport. I also well, quite enjoy baseball. Um, I like I, baseball I, with you. Base, baseball, yeah, baseball is fun to watch. Um, with with Liam. I mean, this is the thing about I guess mm. watching sports in general. I enjoy it a lot more if I'm watching with Liam. Than if I'm watching it by myself. Although yeah. at this point I can just watch football by myself and just scream at people. Um, <laughs> That's nice. my boy. Nice. That's my boy. Yeah. Uh, uh, going to things with Roz. We went to a XFL game once, which is yes. probably one of the most fun times I've ever had with you, simply because I also didn't understand the rules of the XFL. So I was like, I know how this should work, but it sure isn't. Uh, it was a uh, defenders DC, game. It was DC the defenders, first DC yeah. defenders game. Yeah, mm. um, in in XFL's, like January 2020. <laughs> XFL's Before the one the where pandemic. they like do sort of like weird shit, like introduce a third team playing sideways, right? Or like yeah, allow yeah, they, one yeah. guy to have an axe. Or, yeah, or like... <laughs> well, they, they actually they put a gun at midfield, but it's mm. surrounded by an impenetrable wall. It's just like... I, I was gonna say that my favorite sport was like biathlon because it's only on TV like every four years, and you get to see a bunch of like statuesque Swedish women, like very wiry, sort of like ski for like two hundred miles, and then you know shoot perfectly. <laughs> but I'm changing my answer. I think it's the XFL now that I know there's a guy with an axe. Yeah. I I will say uh, one of the the fun bits of the Olympics. Uh, last time I watched it was the decathlon uh, at the finish, where the women were all hugging and congratulating each other and laughing, and the men prop reached the finish line and promptly collapsed and died. Like yeah. they just laid down. It was amazing to watch them be like, "No, I'm not fucking like I'm not fucking getting up. Like you drag me one, out of here." One thing about being a woman, and this is like true versus and trans women is that um the desire to like give your bestie a hug you could be missing both arms and one leg and you would still crawl or hop over like a mile of broken glass to do that i don't know why that's how i feel about giving ross hugs i love giving ross hugs he's a good hugger I guess for like path of least resistance, I like uh, I like football, my football, soccer too, because it's on TV all the time. It's very low stakes because I you can you can yell at it. So like I understand it intuitively right. enough to yell at. Um, 
Yeah, still XFL. I mean, maybe if there was like an XFA, like a an X soccer, or they gave one guy an axe, that would be cool. Um, like to like the, the yeah, XFL. The XFL, mm. yes, trademark it, trademark it now. Right, so patent pending, <laughs> patent pending. Like all it took Original was us joke, to be der steal. deranged off of no sleep, and we invented a new sport that's going to take the world by storm. I mean, it took us ten minutes. All right, I have another one. Yeah, Would bud. you prefer to be on a sinking ship or a sinking plane? Oh, um, sinking ship. Sinking ship. Ship. Although, like, there's there's some considerations here because if it's a ship, you might be like below decks. You might be below the waterline, and then you have the sort of like nightmare, you know, flooding corridor, weird, not sure which way is up situation. Whereas on a plane, you can still get that, but at least you're on like there's one. Z level, right? There's you know, there's one floor. Um, and there's like emergency lighting, at least inshallah. So mm, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's it's difficult. Uh I, I would say small ship. Although, because then we're we're introducing the sort of calculation of how quickly it fucking sinks as well. If it's a large ship, you might just like yeah, a, a cruise line and one of the ones with like 15 pools and like a bartending robot on it, if that's sinking. You, it might take I don't know two weeks or however long has been engineered into it to sink. Yes, so like, I, yeah, right. it could be like the Titanic where it takes five hours, and the only reason so, well, the episode was <laughs> longer than the sinking itself. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I uh, truthfully I don't know. I, I I'll say ships so long as I'm not like so long as I don't have to do the corridor thing because I really don't like the sound of that. See, I feel like um it depends on your definition of sinking because I'm thinking on a plane, you know, sink rate, sink rate. Ah, oh, that's true. 50, that's true. Yeah. 20, terrain, terrain. Pull you know, up. this is pull up. <laughs> you know, but this is, if, this is yeah. a solvable problem at that point. You know, you, you can avoid that problem at this point. So I'm, I'm going well, with plain. Think of it this way, though. If it's, if it's in a, sinking in a watery sense, right? If you're in a plane, unless it's a seaplane, you've already survived a plane crash. You've got to be feeling pretty good about your odds at that yeah, point. Yeah, you got to feel, yeah. you got to be, you, you, you have a lot of confidence at that point. You, mm -hmm. you can go out, you go, you, you, you get off that plane, you know, you get on the life raft, you get home, you're a hero, you fight Mike Tyson after that, you know? You have a lot of confidence. You, you ever think about the, uh, the, the, the crash, the Sully crash in, like, the Hudson, where you could, like, literally have gotten on the plane taken off from the airport, crashed in the river next to the airport, been rescued, be on like dry land within 10 minutes, and you're like a half hour's drive away from where you left, having and then got you're like, there in like the most interesting way possible. And then you're like, thank God I didn't have to take a flight today. <laughs> oh, I hate God, I hate flying. <laughs> All right, next, next, are, next. Are there any old inside jokes from early episodes that some of you no longer appreciate or don't remember fondly? Um, did I don't know. Did we ever do any like early episode jokes that got us canceled or would get us canceled? I don't think uh, so. You I got canceled been... pretty early on for something about a landlord. I don't really remember. Oh yeah, that was that was yeah. that wasn't related That's... to like a bit I was doing though. No. That was like this is a... true. Yes. It was just was a separate saying. beef. Yeah. I don't, I've, I've been don't... pretty consistent. I've been asked in the past, just randomly, to do the Andrew Cuomo impression. <laughs> and I'm kind of like, no, yeah. I'm not going to do that for you because I... I, I'm not a monkey. Uh, I'm not going to just perform for you instantly. Also, I kind of don't like doing it. I need to be in a specific level of intoxication to do it properly. <laughs> or maybe you could pass me some ZD, and then maybe I'd do it. I don't know. <laughs> but but oh. yeah, I... I, I, <laughs> I uh, oh, B biggest fuck. issue is that's... That that whole thing is not based on Andrew Cuomo's uh, Andrew Cuomo directly. That is based on Nick Mullins' impression of Andrew, Andrew Cuomo. And Andrew Cuomo is sort of like a he's not relevant politically anymore either, which sort of limits he, the he, scope. He, sort of, yeah. he took a shit. Yeah, I he did uh, take a shit. I don't know. Uh, is there any shit we? Uh, mm. Oh, there's one. There's. I will say I drink way less when we record these now. Hmm. 
Yeah, that's, that's true. And, and your, your, your mic decision. quality is somewhat better, also. Thank you. The, the the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards having a sort of an audible Liam. Yeah, um, I uh, as I I do miss the bit uh, where I could uh, walk into Raz's room to harass him as we were recording. Oh yeah, yeah. you two were still roommates when you like we started yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. forgot that I, genuinely. It's been I, like long I enough. missed that. It simply being able to like come back from the bathroom and just scream at him. Mm. And, and it's sounding better than my actual mic. <laughs> if you get it I, fed I, in a few I genuinely minutes. can't, can't speaking, think of an answer. Yeah. Speaking of poop, as mm. you mentioned earlier, Liam, you promised to tell us about the worst poop you ever took in the first Q&A and never delivered. I was in Florida for spring break. That's dumb. <laughs> I was in Florida for spring break. <laughs> and what happened? <laughs> I could hear the like Vietnam music like, and the helicopters the in the background. <laughs> what what happened was that I had been drinking and eating garbage like a raccoon for five days straight. I was sitting, we had driven there from Philadelphia, and I was sitting in the back seat buddy's car no. and what happened was i trusted a fart no and mm -mm, i didn't mm -mm. shit a little i shit i shit a lot this is a q a story <laughs> i come in the house too i trusted a fart i listen i had to take a shit i, I didn't know i had to take a shit at the time <laughs> so i took a shit it, it, and it in, was like in the car in his <laughs> nice recently cleaned about to be more brown leather interior. And and the thing is, right, there's no detailing that. Like, you can right. clean that car however you want. Right. It's still going to be the car that you took a shit in. Right. So I There's a very a shit. stark divide in cars between cars that have had shit in them and cars that haven't. Right. You could... Remember, we, this was the last day, so we had to drive back to Pennsylvania. No. So, take a shit. And it just fills the back seat. Yeah. Uh... And there is nowhere for me to really go. So I had to stop by a dumpster, run, like, try to reach my dirty clothes from the back seat, which I couldn't quite do, run around to a dumpster, throw out my shit covered boxers and shorts, uh, get my, like, throw, like, a piece of cloth over my dick, uh, send my buddies to go to like a Walmart and get me a pair of shorts and underwear. I didn't have, so I didn't shower. I, there wasn't an opportunity to shower. Um, I could not go in the Walmart because again, I, so I had to sit in like a puddle of my own creation in the back seat of this car for like the 16 hours back to Pennsylvania. That's harrowing. Yeah, it like, was horrible. The, the worst. But the, the good worst, news is I have pizza now. <laughs> <laughs> the worst shits I've ever taken. I'm just like gonna sort of like segue into that while you're eating. Um, it, like not not that bad because I wasn't beholden to anybody. Like I've never shit in anyone else's car or like on anyone else's stuff or anything like that. The worst shits that I've ever taken have been like primarily IBS based, where it's like it's not embarrassing exactly it's just a really unpleasant experience physically where you're just like okay you're in your own bathroom right that's cool but you're like oh, i'm gonna be in here for a while it's gonna be like there's gonna be peaks and troughs i'm gonna have to take moments to like lie on my side on my bathroom floor mm -hmm. sort of like thinking i'm gonna die for a little rub, bit rub aquifer on your own butthole yes yeah <laughs> like b both your legs going to sleep uh, yeah, and and I mean, I think the worst, the worst thing. I don't know why this is a shared experience, but I've seen posts about it, so it must be. But the worst is when you are on some shit, and it's like you you need to take off all of your clothes, irrespective yep. of whatever else is happening. It's Pretty like, yeah, you, know, you just it's like, Hi, you, sometimes you gotta, and it's like great. It's cool that we're you know we have this function in our bodies that's just like oh, I feel Especially terrible. 
That's especially bad if your bathroom is cold like mine is. Oh, God. <laughs> um, here's an interesting one. Mm. How did you all meet? Um, well, I mean, I was, like, this podcast is my fault, right? Yes. Because I got it into my head that I wanted to do uh, another podcast, like, something that I was, because uh, I was, like, fifth mic on Trash Future, um, and it's changed a bit since then, but at the time, being, like, the newest one on, I felt like, okay, well, I'm along for the ride, I'm having fun, but I'll, I'll see how how it goes, but I'd like to, I'm enjoying podcasting enough that I'd like to do something that I feel I have a bit more sort of like direct control over and more influence over. So I just, I just posted I'm just on Twitter and I'm just like, yeah, does anyone want to start a podcast about engineering disasters? Cause that's what I read about. Well, Wikipedia. you tagged me specifically. Yeah, I did. Cause I was like, I yeah, was like, that right. sounds like a good idea. Yeah. And I was like, all right, yeah, let's sure. Let's try it. The, the idea came one to me fully formed. Yeah, you know, it's terrible because it doesn't work with two people. It needs three people. It needs Liam. That's the other irritating thing is the first episode was on my favorite disaster, <laughs> the Silver Bridge. <laughs> we got we got to go back. We got to go, we gotta back, go and back and record We're, episode re, one redo, again. Yeah, if we can re-record it. We can re-record it. This yeah. is true. We, this is true. It's like we hadn't really figured out the dynamic. We didn't know each other nearly as well, and so it was just like you know stuff and and you you explain it, and I just kind of like throw in jokes occasionally and it, it didn't really work with just the two of us and like also all of your fans were primed for more do not eat content which you know this is true they are right to demand but the content that they expect from you is you explain a thing in a way that is like smart and so that like every reply every reply was like who's this bitch Right, who keeps <laughs> interrupting you <laughs> to make kind of forced jokes, and they were right to say it. Um, but so I think we did like two. Did we just do the one episode without we Liam? Just or did, did we the do one two? episode, just and then the Liam one. got offended because yeah. Liam and I also tried to record a podcast, um, but that also kind of sucked. Um, and that one didn't even wind up going online because I was like, "Nah, this is garbage." Um, You'll never have it. You'll <laughs> never have it. Yeah, really you, you're, yeah, I got rid of those recordings. They're gone. Um, it was supposed to be just like a general interest podcast, which clearly did not work. It was it was not a good. It was not good. It was not very structured, and I wasn't as into sports back then. But it was kind of there was a lot of sports in there, and I didn't know mm. what to say about it. Um, and then the other the other thing is, how did we all meet? Um, I Liam and I we had this discussion like a couple weeks ago. Actually, we have mm -hmm. no idea why we're friends. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we know how we met and i can think of a lot of reasons why we wouldn't be friends um but we what? are i don't it's know I, a, I, it, <laughs> accident, <laughs> accident i got of the really I, I got really drunk at your birthday party and broke a glass and then i i had to come back and apologize yes, the next day you, um you we met, you we met incidentally we we met incidentally through a mutual friend, uh, Mr. Richard Furstein, um, and we at his, uh, at his going away party when he went to Spain going, at and he PYT. Spain, yeah. Remember that PYT, show? PYT, yes. I, that, you know, I the burgers were not bad, but you no, know, that, I didn't mind the, the burgers. Yeah, um, I will say, I what what happened as 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 a, as a sort of as I remember, we got close because uh, well, this is going to be fun. Uh, yeah. So we got close because my ex moved out. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're listening, congratulations on your marriage. To I wish you the best. I mean that oh, 100. I mean that completely <laughs> sincerely. I've grown as a person. You might have to edit that out. You might have like, to edit that out. Look at, looking from side to side to see all the previous avatars, all the other Liams who are just like very much not meaning that sincerely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, why don't we cut that one? But uh, you know, or you can leave it. He's like, what's he gonna do? Message me on Twitter. Uh, he uh, so doesn't he listen to the podcast? Yeah, that's why I said it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking the high road. Uh, so uh, so <laughs> had moved out, and as you recall, uh, my life was imploding. This was the spring of 2016, and I was like, 
hey, so I can't live here by myself without like constantly trying to put a gun to my head. Can I live on your floor? And you're like, yeah, I don't see why not. Uh, and then we moved into 4235, and uh, I supported you through some pretty dark days. You supported me through some pretty dark days, and uh, now we have a podcast. You're yes. like Grant and Sherman, which I guess makes me McClellan. You know? I, I I have referred to our you're friendship. Not in more, uh, you're not Alice. McClellan, Alice. You're, you're, you you do not you you are <laughs> not a Confederate traitor. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I have thought about my friendship with Ross S. Sherman and Grant more than once. If if you're unfamiliar with the American Civil War, the bit that I'm referencing is, I think possibly one of the greatest declarations of friendship in American history, which is um, uh, he stood by me when I was crazy, and I stood by him when I was drunk. <laughs> But he stood when he was drunk, bud. Yeah, I <laughs> fucked up the pronouns there. It's, uh, yeah, and now sir, we stand we stand by each other always. Yeah, yes. Uh, there was. Also I'm not this. sure which of. Wait, no, I am sure which of you is which because uh, I mean, Liam, you're 100 percent Sherman and Justin yeah. and Grant. But yeah, like, yeah. I, 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 I don't do know what that makes me. I do faint at the sight of blood. <laughs> yeah. no, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> like, gotta, gotta, gotta retire to my extreme. You break like, your nose. No, you don't. <laughs> Gonna retire to my extremely like my comfortable nose. tent. What was yeah. that when we were walking home from the from the open the young friends the the young friends uh thing at the at the uh divine Lorraine? Remember you fell and fucked up your nose? Did you not break it? No, I did not break it. I did fuck uh, it up though. Uh, I thought you broke it. It was bad. bleeding quite heavily. Yes. Yeah. I, mm. yeah. Shout out to young friends of the Preservation Alliance. Um, home of some of the most dangerous open bars I have seen in my oh, life. Yeah, me too. <laughs> List of Union generals. I'm gonna find my general sona in here. Uh, oh man, this is a long ass list though. You got too many generals. Yeah, you could be someone weird like William Mahone. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, he was it, a confederate. It, it, <laughs> write in in the comments. Just be what mead. You think my, You're uh... mead now. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, write in in the comments. Uh, but yeah, so that's 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 how you two met. That's how the podcast started, and yeah, you know, uh, just a series of happy little accidents. Yeah, uh, Ross supported me in friend court in the spring of 2016, uh, and then I yeah. If each of you could invite anyone to guest on the, the pod, it's the Pope. Who would it be? I it's was also going to say the Pope. Pope. It's the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like current Pope seems cool. Be interested to yeah, have him on. He seems pretty good. Mm. I want to talk to him about uh, being a bouncer in Buenos Aires or wherever the hell it was. Was it Buenos Aires? I believe so. Yeah. 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 Call that the hand you of imagine, God. Yeah. I... Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It'd be interesting to do like a, a a the Catholic Church episode with the Pope on. Just like you know, we went to this sort of like the top guy. We called the manager. Um, I, uh, 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 Your Holiness, is Catholicism real? <laughs> is it strong? <laughs> is it my friend? Uh, <laughs> Why haven't you guys taken me personally off the membership rolls yet? Uh, I, I, have, I have been doing everything that I can, uh, and yet. I don't know. Yeah, co-signed yeah, Pope. Yeah. I think we're unanimous yeah, on that one. We're, we want the Pope on a podcast. Mm. If you, podcast. Uh, for some reason, work at the Vatican... <laughs> yeah, if you have an in, we, we have people everywhere, right? Yeah, so we've with definitely this holiness, the Pope. We, we, we have an in with the papal <laughs> household. We're gonna do like a uh, papal visit. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, technically, it is interfaith dialogue, right? Like, uh, we got we got all three Abrahamic religions. Just you know, <laughs> okay. as Roz dies. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Marks aside, what historical figures? Do you think would be podcasters if they were around today? Ooh, I mean, <sighs> Marx uh, would one hundred percent have been a podcaster. William that's Randolph obviously. Hearst. Mm, do you think he yeah, would be a the, podcaster or like a podcast manager? He'd a, commissioner? No, he'd he'd be, he'd be a Substack guy. Oh, uh, he'd be a Substack guy. That's true. Mm. Uh, a podcaster. Uh, I feel like someone like a Horace Greeley. Uh, another newspaper who really wanted to just see his name in the paper. I feel like yeah. uh, Leland Stanford would have a podcast. Oh, sure. It would be sort of an Elon Musk type thing. 
I, I think you could have like quite a successful Ambrose Bierce podcast. Oh, uh, I would love to listen to that. Oh my god, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> and he like, yeah, I mean, he he's very sarcastic, very sardonic. Had the soul of a podcaster, and then like oh, you, Virgil you, you Texas get... disappeared forever. <laughs> no, you get out. You get you you get you get Bierce and Twain. Together Ooh. like once a week for an hour. Oh yeah. my god, that'd be really good. <laughs> oh, I'd listen to that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. I don't think I can think of a few more like um, Ida May Wells, hundred percent podcast. Um, but like, yeah. not not funny. More like fucking like the rare subset of like journalism podcast that's good. Um, yes, like exposés and stuff. Um. All of the all of the like tabloid writers who wrote about like Jack the Ripper or whatever, they would all be true crime podcasters now. All right. Here's a fun one. Mm. Given the opportunity to pedestrianize one city by force, which would you choose? <laughs> <laughs> by by force is the part by that force. makes this. By force. I, I really I, I like. I believe that. this is a punitive expedition, <laughs> which is why um, I'm picking Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> See, I was gonna pick. I was honestly gonna pick LA. Does it have to be yeah, LA? Would also be really Houston. Funny. Give me Houston. Houston. Yeah. <laughs> I I think I'm going to be a, an effective altruist about this. I'm going to be a utilitarian about this. And like all effective altruists, this is going to lead me back to neocolonialism. But I think the best sort of like return on your investment you could get by doing like any urban city by force, it's got to be Mexico City, right? Like it's one of the most congested and yet largest cities in the the planet. Um oh, yeah. it's got to be up so, there with like Shanghai. <coughs> Yeah, I mean, you could probably you probably get pretty far by pedestrianizing good chunks of Mexico City. I haven't been there, so I, I you know, I can't speak for that. But it is um, it is definitely a city that, just based on the amount of congestion, you know, you, you could pretty rapidly move to a car free or car light system. Well, see, we've we've also now solved which civil war general I am because we're getting me to invade Mexico. So I'm Winfield Scott. Um, there you go. <laughs> I mean, the downside is, aside from the, you know, having to invade Mexico thing, um, is that we would lose out on the cool uh, VW Beetle taxi cabs, the like white and green mm. ones, which they may not still have. But, also, a uh, bunch of Peugeots yeah. and Renaults you can't get in the United States for some fucking reason. Yeah. Yeah. The whole Latin American car market is always fascinating to me because uh, it's just like, um, it's like, Oftentimes it's like two thirds American, but then with like some weird modifiers, and it's like, oh, you know, this is the thing that VW only sold here because for some reason a bunch of West Germans made very good business contacts in like South America in the sixties, whatever. Mm. Mm. Nazi mm. joke. Mm. Yes. Uh, so I have, I have Nazis on the brain because I'm writing the next. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be a bonus or a mainline I, episode. I got, it's got Nazis, a lot of Nazis on in the it. brains. Yeah. <laughs> what a thing. I got Nazis on my mind. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't. I got Nazis. <laughs> I don't know. It feels like an MGM musical song. Something. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like it's something you'd work into like Hail Caesar or something like that. This is true. Yes. Well, Pretty underrated that's just, film, that's just the, the, the producers, I guess. You know? Yeah, I guess so. It was in the back near Switzerland. All I've I heard was yodeling. Movie. I've never seen that movie the whole way through because I, you know, the, the introduction is very boring. Uh, um, and I've never quite gotten through it, but now I realize I probably just skipped that, you know? The, um, um, the, the, the remake with Nathan Lane and um, Matthew Broderick or the original with Zero Mosto. I I haven't seen either of them. Um, huh. Other I've seen no I've seen the original one, but not the whole way through because again the introduction oh, okay. takes a long okay. time. Yeah, yeah. The remake um, cuts all that, but uh, on the other hand, you're kind of missing out on some other stuff too. But Nathan Lane's really good. The TGV and the Shinkansen turn into mecha robots and fight one another. Who wins? 
uh, the fucking Intercity 125 that's still left standing because no one respects it, and it's like <laughs> the, the <laughs> they, CGV they, they and the Shinkansen destroy each other. And 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 the inner city one through five is just standing there watching. Yeah, I, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, <laughs> <laughs> Brit- Brit- headlights. <laughs> uh-huh. British engineering wins again. <laughs> <laughs> Default, the two sweetest words in the English language. British engineering is just a byword for at some point the doors are going to fall off. Oh yeah, there's someone. Someone has like sealed their sandwich inside the door panel, and it's like slowly rotting in there. Mm. Mm. It's a recurring story about British Leyland that that happened. Um, Great, that's that's terrific. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like a, a, a TGV does not win this this contest. No, I think the, I think the Shinkansen wins based on uh you know being uh Japanese. They are also the specialists in mechs and Gundams and that's true. Such things. Also, also, also Evangelions. Evangelions. The, the, the <laughs> what is it? The L zero. Uh, is is my favorite uh favorite just because like it looks so goddamn dumb. Hmm. What the the Zero series Shinkansen? Yeah, with the with the, the it's so dude it's so good to see you face. Yeah. Oh wait, you I mean like the, uh, I like the are, like are you talking about the Maglev one or you're talking about the original one? Yeah, because uh, I the like one, the original the one. one. Oh, the new yeah, one. The, yeah, the, the, the new ones all look like shoes because it turns out yeah. that's the most aerodynamic yeah. thing. Whereas well, the, 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 the old ones actually look like bullets, which I like. The old ones or the new ones have to have the, the all these weird shapes because one of the things they did when they were designing the line is they kept all the tunnels relatively small. Mm. So you have to have these extremely excessively aerodynamic shapes because otherwise it would blow the windows out. Oh, Jesus. Um, that's also why they have relatively small windows on those trains. Hmm. Um, as opposed to in Europe where they just made the tunnels bigger and you save out on vehicle engineering, which I, I, I'm going to be honest, I think that's the correct way to do it. Um, <laughs> yeah, as opposed to the like streamliner <laughs> thing where you just sort of like yeah. do neither and blow the windows out. On the other hand, the, uh, the Shinkansen is the superior high-speed rail system of the world just because it's like, yeah, we run these trains, you know, at 180 miles an hour, and we run them every five minutes. <laughs> mm. Oh, you will get there. You will get yeah. there. You will. Oh, get you missed there. your train. That's a damn shame. There's another one in five minutes. Well, you can actually see it coming. <laughs> Everyone, pick a specific vehicle, just a kind, not just trains or cars. A specific oh. vehicle. What? You gotta and, pick and one before what? I get to the Just, second part. Okay, 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 okay fine. Do we, is, do we tell you our uh, car? God damn it, fine. Is heavy uh, artillery a vehicle? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm gonna go with, like, forward control vans. Like, uh, you know, cab over engine vans. Yeah, okay. no, I, I'm going with heavy artillery. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go with, uh... I'm gonna go with a high hood standard cab dash eight. Which Norfolk Southern bought a few. Now here's the question: Which one of your choices is leaving the ring alive? Mine. It's heavy <laughs> artillery. <laughs> How yeah. big no, is it... the ring? How big is the ring, <laughs> yeah. Liam? Yeah. It's, it's big <laughs> enough that I can fit in I, my heavy artillery and shoot I'm getting, it at you. I'm getting wiped out unless I'm also following the British Rail doctrine as we're developing here of let the other two fight and just survive. You know, survive through obscurity. Turn um, the headlights yeah, one off. One shot, Alice, and you become a crater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, how big is the ring? You might the take ring. out yourself too. I won't. No, it's it's ten miles wide. Okay. Okay. What if it wasn't though? Mm. Then I guess I'm switching to a high hood diesel, motherfucker. <laughs> but then also the problem with the high hood diesel is that the like you've got to have the 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 tracks to support that. Otherwise, you're just trying to do the thing that guy who drove the train at the hospital ship is doing, where you're just kind of like grinding along it along like a sort of an unrailed surface, hoping for the best, and you can't steer. What if you're pointing, true. like, you know, uh, tangentially to Liam's uh, Liam's artillery piece? You know, there's nothing you it's can gonna do. A, it's going to be a going to be a long going to be a long fight. Let me tell <laughs> you about my artillery piece. Mm. Um, oh my! 
What is the continuity of posting plan that we should all have? What? Oh, you mean if Twitter implodes? I mean, I went back to Tumblr, and that's been hysterical. I'm writing, I'm writing it out. Uh, I guess I eventually believe... I'll have to go to Mastodon, but... No, oh, I, no. I, I think we should expand the scope of this question. What if there was a, a coronal mass ejection from the sun tomorrow that oh, knocked boy. out the entire internet? How do we keep posting? Well, I wouldn't like that at all. Um, I wouldn't like that either. Uh, yeah, I if, don't... if that happened, I would simply... Um, I, I own a typewriter. The ribbon for it is still inked. I would type out my posts and I would staple them to like things in my neighborhood. Uh, and then other people would also have to do, read. Yeah, yeah I'd probably yeah, also do yeah, that. Yeah. IRL posting. On posts, in fact. Mm. <laughs> so, like, get really into, like, wheat pasting. Um, and just, you know, the kind of brainless shit that pops into my head where I'm like, God, the most recent one I had just off the dome on, on Tumblr was, uh, if, if there's all these spaces that are non-Euclidean, how come Euclid's still king shit? You would get that, like, typed up and, like, wheat pasted to your front door. <laughs> you would hate it. People would kill me, and they'd be right to do it. This is this is something I think everyone needs to have in their back pocket. What are you going to do if, you know, there's a massive sunstorm tomorrow, you have a sort of a Carrington event or whatever it was called. Uh, like, and not no... massive enough to fry us, just massive enough to stop us posting. Well, yeah, I mean, that's still, it takes out all the electronics everywhere. Um, how do you keep posting? Um, and all I can say is, you know, get in, it make sure you know your your friends and neighbors well enough that, you know, you can, you, 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 you know how to get together and post, uh, yeah. outside of the internet. <laughs> oh, it's cracking all my yeah. bones. And in the, in the meantime, in sort of the social network sense, uh, I don't go to Mastodon, it's Twitter, but with more mods. And the one thing yeah. Twitter needs, you know, is, you know, more mods, right? It's like, what yeah. if I was, what if my ability to post was like tied to like even more like weird, oversensitive guys? No thanks. Nah. Anonymous oh. asks, hey, have you ever done DMT? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm genuinely, like, too scared to do drugs, is the thing. Not really scared of, like, breaking the law, but, like, I don't want to let my subconscious, like, off the leash. I keep that, that shit very tightly controlled. Um, I, Smart decision. I, I would never do, like, a psychedelic by choice. Uh, I, I smoked weed one time. I liked it too much, and I'm like, no, that's too much fun for me. Uh, <laughs> back, back to the salt mines with you. Um, mm -hmm. What is DMT? Uh, know, it's one of those things that the, like, the CIA shot up like hippies with. It's a psychedelic, and it, it like kicks in real quick. Uh, the, the effects only last like 5 to 20 minutes, I think. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. I, I, so it's like an it was experience like, on a on a on a on a quick time timeline. I always thought it was like something weed adjacent. Um, no, yeah, and nah, I guess you, not. you're thinking of CBD. I think um, no, C I mean, CBD doesn't do anything. No, and the problem with uh, with like DMT having like a 20 minute like time when you're high or whatever is that if it's a psychedelic, you could be experiencing that as fuck knows how long. You know, right. um, yeah, I. I mm, I've I've had a bad track record with drugs in that they haven't done anything to me. No, you're everything proof. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 every, everything. Yeah, everything except alcohol. I mean, you know, I, I, weed doesn't really do anything unless I have way too much of it. Um, kratom, actually, kratom's kind of nice. Uh, and then, but you know, it's nice for falling asleep. That's the main thing. And what cocaine didn't do anything to me. You know, what the worst one was I got prescription Percocets. When Are I got my wisdom perks? teeth out. Well, this is the real question based on other evidence. Were they fake Percocets? Or am I just somehow immune to all forms of opiates? <laughs> no, you got fake Percocets. It's probably uh, fake Percocets, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've heard a lot of different complaints about opiates, but unless you've like been doing them a lot before, they just mm. don't work, I think is a pretty uncommon one. 
Whereas somebody sold me or somebody like prescribed me, uh, dispensed me rather fake opiates. And yeah. then someone got my real opiates, I think is much more common. <laughs> someone someone got to investigate the back end of the Burke, uh, Burke Virginia, CVS. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we won't stop at nothing. Yeah. That was years ago, though, so maybe don't do that. Um, <laughs> I said we will stop at nothing. I got to scroll through all the uh, uh, questions yeah, that say, Wells, where's Franklin? Um, oh, well, and they're right, you know? Oh, where, where, Where is it? It's up where your butt, it? Alice. Yeah. Oh, my. Mm. What are your favorite concrete ad mixtures? I don't know. <laughs> <Fuck>. What? <laughs> uh, huge, huge gravel fan. Number one gravel fan over That's here. That's not an ad mixture. What the fuck is an ad mixture? I... An ad mixture is something extra you add to the concrete to give it certain rebar. properties. Uh, rebar yeah, is re- not an ad mixture. <laughs> yeah, I'm what? also going with rebar. <laughs> what is an ad mixture? Give me some examples of ad mixture so I can decide which one is my guy. Well, let's say you want like self-leveling concrete or something like Calcium that. Calcium chloride add... or something to accelerate it. You add super plasticizer, also known as super P. That is an ad mixture. Super P. Mine is mine is yeah, mine super is sugar. You can find out why. <laughs> <laughs> also, the name uh, makes me giggle. I'm not going to say it on the podcast. You're just going to have to go to the concrete ad mixer uh, subsection. <laughs> Super P is stored in the Super Bowls. I don't know. Super Super P is, um, you'd think, uh, you'd think it, uh, you know, it it, it really fucks around with the slump. Um, Mm. This uh, is for the concrete guys out there. Anyway, so, um, oh, this is an interesting one because it's not for all of us. It's apparently for Alice, even though I think Liam and I would also have an answer. The big spotlight has been on. What is your favorite mountain goat song, Alice? Oh, fuck, that's actually really difficult, because I like several million of them in really different ways. Up the Wolves, but like, Up the Wolves on the um, uh, Sunset Tree, all acoustic, re-record album. Oh, that's album a good choice. That, that was called, like, Come Come to the Sunset Tree, that one, uh, is, yeah, Up the Wolves. Um, second place, Choked Out. Third place, Guys on Every Corner. Uh, I mean, really, just like uninterrupted career of of bangers, um, by the Mountain Goats. So, I, like, this genuinely, the 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 band that I listen to by far the most. Everything else is a distant second. Um, there, there's a there's a Tumblr post that's like um about a guy who, um, like only plays Dwarf Fortress or whatever, and like plays it exclusively. And when he just asked to like play something else, he's like, "No thanks, I already play a video game." That's how I feel about music and the Mountain Goats. It's like, yeah, there I is, a, to a is there a podcast called "I Only Listen to the Mountain Goats"? Yes, there is. Where well, they do covers, I have uh, an album that they made of those, and yeah, no, it's really, it's really good. It's the thing. You guys have what opinions about this? What? Uh, oh. obviously, no children. Yeah, I was uh, also going to say no children. Woke up new <laughs> and probably yeah. the uh, death metal band in Denton. Laura yeah, that's, James that's Grace a did one. a great cover of that on I Only Listen to the Mountain Goats uh, that you can go and listen to. It's fucking astounding. Um, That'll be our, our dream podcast guest, the Mountain Goats. <laughs> Honestly, Just John yes. Darnell. <laughs> <laughs> John, if you're listening, um, you follow me on Twitter, and I'm not sure why, but uh, <laughs> I bet I bet you regret that. Uh, please come on the show. Uh, I don't know what you, we will get you to talk about, but uh, I, yeah, I promise not to talk about Mountain Goat songs for an hour. I promise to exclusively talk about Mountain Goat songs for an hour. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I forgot. I forgot another runner-up, which is uh, the triumph of the pigs that ran straight away into the water. Oh, and dark in here. I'm just going to keep interrupting every time I think of one for the rest of the episode. Oh, Sorry, you should never have asked me about the mountain goats. Um, 
you just, you just go through the entire discography and like, oh yeah, that basically was a good one that's too. how yeah. I feel. That is basically how I feel. It's like, <laughs> it, like the ones that I've listed are like, you know, uh, sort of five stars. Everything else is four point nine, and I'm going to be listing all the four point nine ones in like alphabetical order from here on out. Soft targets. Uh, all right, in a fight, gritty or the fanatic, who wins? Gritty. He's seven feet tall. Mm. The fanatic is also seven feet tall. No, gritty cannot. The fanatic, the fanatic has a technical. We've seen. Uh, this is like true. Hot dog cannon. Yeah, the crew serves hot Although, dog. Although so does uh, gritty. He has a zamboni. Fanatic uh, we'll is see. fanatic is six six and weighs three hundred pounds. Uh, we put him. We put him in the same ring with the train, my destroyed yeah, van, well, and your artillery. This is base. this is the real question. It's like okay, so the grit, gritty has got the zamboni. The fanatic presumably also has a vehicle of some kind. Yeah, he does. Um, he has the hot dog cannon, dude. Yeah, so so the hot dog I, truck. So okay, I do think I do think the Z- the zamboni doesn't go very fast though. I I think uh, gritty wins, assuming they 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 fight at the center. But if they're fighting at uh, CBP, then uh, the fanatic wins. I think it depends. There's definitely very like much a, it does on depend field on advantage. You have to put them on neutral ground of some kind. Yeah. Uh. Um, you know, which is the parking lot. <laughs> if, 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 if Gritty and the Fanatic are fighting each other in the parking lot, hey, lot of like, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, my money's still on Gritty. I think he See, wants I'm, him more. I think he has more heart. I feel like the Fanatic, he's gonna do something with that big gun barrel shaped nose. I don't know what he <laughs> can do with that, um, but I feel like he can do something with that. That might go like a twenty-two great. in there, you know. Yeah, uh, it, no, I think it's a larger. It's definitely it's a larger bore than that, you know. It, it's, <laughs> well, the whole he, nose bore, or like, because I'm thinking there's like a concealed pistol within there, and he's just gonna like do him like the Irishman, where he just like walks up to him and it's just like bam, you know. But yeah, I, clearly I you, you might are, be you're like envisioning a, it as like a four-inch cannonball. That's what I'm thinking comes Ooh. out of there. Uh. Yeah, but imagine the recoil though, and that's at like face height. It'd just snap his neck. It'd be like mutually assured destruction. That's a good True. point. Yeah, that would be really bad. Yeah. So I, all right. So I, I don't know. We just have to figure out how to get them to fight each other, and we'll yep. find out. <laughs> <laughs> the U.S. Franklin. The, the U.K. and U.S. have joined forces to banish Well, there's your problem from their lands. Where would the podcast be relocating to Canada. in this event? Canada. Yeah, Canada. I would, I would, I would Canada. say Mont- Montreal. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I would also we'll just, sign we'll just up for rip Canada. Off the Canadian government for uh, for small business loans. Yeah, I mean, the, yes. like the the Canadian government. Uh, okay, immigration might be difficult because, like, it's difficult everywhere, and especially like Canada is racist. Fine, uh, but like, it's like the U.S. but with healthcare. You know, the, 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 guns and stuff, which is fun for me. I can shoot bottles and cans off a fence. The only downside is that we would all have to fend off um, Justin Trudeau's roving goons of doctors trying to convince us to kill ourselves. Oh I my thought god. you were going to go with roving gangs of blackface, but yes, also Oh that. my god, I, I, I've wanted to, I've kind of wanted to do an episode on that, how they've like, I think we should. decided <laughs> that like... Literally just like, like, comes to your house and is like, hey, have you ever considered killing yourself? It's like, frequently, but I tend not to do it. <laughs> Was really I was, good. you know, I, you know, it's kind of like uh, there, there's, you know, I. There are instances where maybe medically assisted suicide is, you know, a, a compassionate thing. Oh but, sure. You know that the moral hazard has asserted itself very quickly in Canada. Yes. <laughs> But yeah, so I would, it's, it's I would so grim. You can, like you can gen- the, the the raving the roving gang of blackface and uh, well, that too, yeah. the Vorkians. Yes, yeah. I mean, genuinely, Vorkians like it, we're barely exaggerating. If you're not familiar with this, there's recordings from like you know disability advocates in Canada who are just fully like in hospital and like multiple doctors just come up to you and it's like, hey, you ever considered killing yourself? And it's like, but yeah, you, you, I came like- in here for like. I, I have a broken arm or whatever, and they're like, <laughs> yeah, okay, but, you know, an end to all your suffering, right? You ever considered that? You know, just think about it, I'm gonna leave you this pamphlet. Reminds yeah. me, uh, my dad told me a story a while back, he broke his arm when he was in, like, in high school, 
and like the priest came in to give him last rites for some reason. He was very confused. <laughs> Do you know something I don't? <laughs> the, the reason the reason I I reached for broken arm there is because it's a running joke amongst trans people that if you go to like um, hospital with like a broken arm and you're trans, they're like, okay, first thing you got to do is stop taking the hormones. And it's like, but. <laughs> I don't. Huh? I don't know that. Is that relevant? I. <laughs> yeah, but Canada. Yep. I mean, maybe Canada. New Zealand. Maybe. Yes. We would be colonizers. I mean, we we be colonizers in Canada too. I mean, it's, um... We're going to Monterey, Mexico. Yeah, well, we <laughs> certainly won't be colonizers. Winfield Scott rides again. Uh, yes. yes, we're going to. Uh, we're going to go to Buenos Aires. We're gonna go to, uh, I don't know. I always wanted to go to Ashrira. That sounds like fun. Mm. You go to, um, would be a, 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 I would name a bunch of Russian cities, but we can't go there now because of Putin. No. Um, yeah. we could go to could go to Berlin if we could, like, you know, navigate rental hell. Um, right. We could go to Kiev. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> we'll, we'll relocate to Kiev. Yeah, awesome. enlisting in the International uh, Ukrainian Legion to avoid having to pay Berlin rents. That's, yeah, you know, the most true. European vibe. We'll, do, we'll, we'll just, we'll, we'll broadcast propaganda. <laughs> I mean, what else is new, right? Barely have yes. to change anything. What was the most influential or formative book you <laughs> I think there's an implied four there, but it was not written. Uh, I mean, it's going to count as cheating if I say the Quran, because that's like obvious, right? So, uh, yeah. the man who was Thursday, G.K. Chesterton. Um, it, what if the guy in the Panopticon was also all the other guys who were in the Panopticon? Um, changed the way that I thought about like power and conspiracy and the state and, uh, it's most it was just a good a good thriller in a kind of like weird way. And I, I read it because it was a sort of theme in, in Deus Ex of all things. Mm -hmm. Uh mine is probably Crime and Punishment, based on uh I guess like a lot of it, like the the is crime ever justifiable? Is like what is justifiable? Uh themes around utilitarianism, you know, rationalism, the idea of Suffering of man being good and necessary uh, was very important to me when I was a teenager, and it's important to me now. Because uh, I don't know, you know, what we do with uh, suffering and all that shit. And I'm still sort of well, learning. I mean, uh, I have this Canadian doctor here who has some questions about that. Um, oh no! <laughs> it's Jordan Peterson. I Christ, what is it about Canadians with the uh, fucking advanced You're degrees? Canadian doctor, and I. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to say it's a book I've never actually owned, um, but I used to check out from the library a lot where, when I was a kid. Uh, libraries, folks, they're very good. Mm. Um, David Macaulay's "The Way Things Work," mm. um, the one with the mammoths, um, and explaining how a whole lot of mechanical devices, you know work through like these very nice illustrations and simple diagrams it's sort of like it's it's very nice to see how you can break down complicated processes into ways that you can sort of uh explain to someone like me a uh, 11 year old child um and also there's lots of tiny mammoths in there which are really cool um i learned everything i needed to know about engineering from tiny mammoths um <laughs> so yeah that that that's a very good one i again it's weird because i i i don't have a copy of it. it it was always something i checked out from the library it was never something that uh that like i actually owned um but that's a good book <laughs> give it if you have if you're listening to this and you have kids give them that book <laughs> <laughs> or make them check it out from the library so they learn Yes. The libraries are good. It's a good idea. If you had to choose one disaster you'd cover to die in, which one and why? Oh God. Okay. Jesus uh, Christ. That's yeah, yeah, that, that's that's some that's 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 a bad question. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. 
-hmm. We don't really do things where people have died well. There's a couple. Yes. Uh, there's like a Greek I airline guess, uh, crash, or like Le one of the one of the Malaysian ones, mm. were, were getting decapitated uh, by a flying yes. magnesium shot. I there's there's a couple of plane crashes where people like uh, die of hypoxia and like you know the oxygen supply runs out and you're unconscious and the plane flies into a mountain. I figure that way there's enough plausible deniability that like you're like, oh, maybe it's going to be fine, and then you just go to sleep and don't wake up. That's probably the least worst I can think of. Or any of the ones where someone like, you know, is crushed or exploded or something and doesn't know the first thing about it, that appeals to me as well. Um, yeah, like Piper Alpha, you're dead instantly mm -hmm. and you have no idea why. <laughs> yeah. You're just like your soul is leaving your body, and there's no body left. <laughs> Very rapidly, yeah. we might add. It takes you're you like, like ten now or twenty in minutes. Like... Yeah, it's, it takes you like ten or twenty minutes to realize you're dead. <laughs> yeah, you're like measured in acreage at that point, and then you're just kind of like <laughs> looking down as a as a as a ghost, and you're just like, oh, okay. Um, yeah, anything like that. I don't I don't like the sort of like lingering or like um, you know sort of like long scene approaching kind of deaths. Um, if you had a farm, what would be your top three choices for animals to have? And what kind and brand of tractor would you drive? Not a goddamn John Deere. <laughs> uh, okay, so, well, pigs are out, obviously. Uh, yeah. Cows are quite bad for the environment. I like goats. Uh, I, I like sheep. I would say sheep. I would say, I would say sheep. Probably has some sheep, a, yeah. Some really adorable, uh, a, a, and also this, it's a shame that Dev isn't here for this because uh, they are, you know, yeah, yeah. sort of resident sheep expert, and can yes. back me up when I say that sheep are both adorable and morons. Um, <laughs> I, I I like the the sheep with the black faces. I like the little tiny Lake District sheep, the name of which I don't remember. Um, and uh, in in terms of tractor, my favorite in farming simulator has always been. The uh, the time Mercedes made a tractor, the like MB track, I think it was called, in this really strange, lurid green and yellow color. Um, I think it looks weird as hell and really compelling. I don't know why I like it, but I do. I will I take New with... Holland, uh, as they are from Pennsylvania. They are from, in fact, Lancaster County, New Holland, yeah. Pennsylvania. I would have to go with uh, some kind of some kind of. Um... Like a big steam tractor, like a traction engine, like a case or something. You know, mm. I think that'd be really good. Mm. Um, as opposed to the, the animals, um, you know, I, I maybe I'm hypocritical for saying this because I do mm. enjoy eating delicious animals, but I don't want to kill the animals. So I have sure. to do sheep. Maybe I could do dairy cows, and then a third thing. I don't know, some horses or some bullshit. Yeah, horses, um, horses is a good yeah. idea. You could do like yeah. something weird, like alpacas or something. Oh, alpacas would be good. Yeah, I like alpacas. Um, I have a great, I have a great photo that I took a while back outside the Strasbourg Railroad that had um one of their steam locomotives and an alpaca oh, yes. in it. Yeah, it's a really good one. Um, I'll send it to Devin to shove in the episode right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely do an alpaca farm. That'd be fun. Um, they're so cute. Um, they're really nice. <laughs> very, very soft yarn as well. Yes, I've uh, my grandparents gave me a a, a a nice um beanie made of alpaca fur. It's very, very warm. Oh, beautiful! Uh, <laughs> yes. Mm. All right. Um, this is the same fucking question again. Um. <laughs> Is it worse, Franklin? No, no, it's about which engineering disaster would you die in. Okay, how about none, please? Yeah, none, please. No, I, I would like to die at the age of old, surrounded by, you know, loving friends and family, and absolutely no pain whatsoever. Uh, gone off those good hospital drugs, perhaps. Um, Robbed a cocktail, yes. Mm-hmm, yeah. I... Just heard a weird noise from the kitchen. I'm gonna go check on that. Oh god! I think it's cool that we're like taking it in turns to kill a home invader. Um, yes. yes. Oh, question for Liam: Golf GTI versus Golf R. Uh, okay. I hang on one second. So, 
if you sort of view the Golf R as basically a baby Audi, this question was a lot uh, harder to answer before they jacked them all up wildly in price and sort of defeated the point of the Golf R, where now you would just buy an Audi A3. Um, I quite like my GTI. Uh, but the Golf R does have all-wheel drive, which I'm very jealous of. And I think, like, for my purposes, if like if you sort of, to me, like, I don't really give a shit about the interior. As long as I have Bluetooth and heated seats, that's all I really care about. Sure. Um, I, I would say I'd stick with the Golf R because of the all-wheel drive and the bigger turbo. But uh, the GTI is is sort of, like, you know, I have X amount of dollars. Now it's like whatever they're up to, 30, 32. And I want, you know, an everything car. I think the GTI is maybe a little better at that. Do you think uh, that having the, the like... I'm very sort of, like, of the Golf R, though. Mm. Do you think that having the Scandinavian sort of like all-wheel drive and shit like that makes it sort of less Golf-like and more like an Audi, though? Yeah, I do. I, I really do. And I think that having it just be front-wheel drive and, and mine... Uh, now that it's been modded, it has a significant amount of torque steer, but I think that sort of adds to the fun. Mm. Sure. You're doing, like, uh, Philadelphia Drift, you know? Yes. I figured out what the what the problem was. There's a home someone, someone got on top of the fridge ah. and then jumped down and then knocked over a whole bunch of bullshit. Um, You're being luckily, tormented no, by these cats. I was about to say, uh, very, very powerful cats. Hmm. All right, here's one. Yes. Liam and Justin, the yes. woke left have forced you the transition to make the podcast <laughs> 100% trans. What right. are your new names? <laughs> Le- Leah, easy. Hmm. I mean, yeah, I just, I, not too far off what I did. Easy option. As I was told if I were born a different gender, I would be Jessica. I would so, be Aislinn, is what my parents told me. Aislinn? Aislinn. Ashlyn? Ashlyn? That would be Ashlyn, yeah. Aislinn. <laughs> Aislinn? Uh, I, 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 like, insisting that it's pronounced that way. That's, I was about I to know. say, I, I know one Ashlyn who was a fan of the podcast, and that's how that is pronounced. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's fine, I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Just, like, a, a, given a succession of, like, Irish names, each of which you insist is pronounced the way that it's spelled in, like, English yes. orthography. Siapan. Aifi. Sayorse. Sayorse, yes. <laughs> you can throw a shoe at any person. If they're dead, they're now alive for the dura- duration of the shoe toss. Who are you throwing at? Hold on a second. Wh- uh, what? Oh, I see. So, uh... Right, so like we are all Montadero Zaidi, right? We're throwing a shoe yeah, at we're you know, throwing George a shoe W. At Bush a historical or whatever. Person or but it could be anybody. A live person, yes. Uh-huh. But if they're if they're dead, then they're they're resurrected for the purposes of us doing this. Yes. Um I you got me thinking about the Civil War again, so I'm just gonna say Robert E. Lee, because I think it'd be funny. I don't want to hit him in the head with a boot. Like not not like a shoe either, like a boot. Um, a big one. Yeah, like a riding yeah. boot. I'm gonna hit him in the head with a riding boot. Um, I'm going with Kissinger. Yeah? Not a bad one. Yeah, because I, I don't want to give anyone the dignity of being resurrected. <laughs> Fair enough. No, because it's, 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 it's great, because if you resurrected, like, Robert E. Lee or Stonewall Jackson or Nathan Bedford Forrest or whatever, you could be like, uh, you and your guys have not only, like, lost, but you continued to eat shit for the next 150 years. Also, you're about to get hit in the head with a boot, and then you hit him in the head with a boot, and then they die again. Um, which to me seems like a sort of embarrassing interlude in your death, right? As you come back, yeah. find out that you have taken yet another L, then you get hit in the head with a boot, and then it's back to death. Yeah, I feel like well, the problem. The problem is, you know, if uh, if you resurrected Stonewall Jackson, do do I then have to go down to the cemetery in Lexington? To throw the shoe at him. Well, I think they, they come to you. Lexington enough. Yeah, <laughs> no, what I'm thinking is, you know, less than you know, like like less than a quarter mile away in the same cemetery as my granddad. 
Oh yeah, fair enough. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, you know, maybe, maybe I should be resurrecting him. <laughs> Is this all happening? Because we all get one. Is this all happening at the same time? Is uh, is Robert E. Lee going to arise from the dead and see Henry Kissinger, and then a second mm -hmm. later get hit in the face with a boot? Because yeah. that sort of like adds a, a level of unpredictability. This is true. This is true. Yeah. To the whole affair. <laughs> Liam, who's your guy? Who's getting hit in the head with a boot? Uh, who's getting hit in the head with a boot? Uh, or shoot. Sorry. And and they come back to life if I do this? Not permanently, just like long enough for you to hit him with the thing. Um, mm, let's see. There's a lot of people I hate where my rage simply wouldn't be expressed enough. Or I'd be sort of mm. in some sort of time loop of, of hitting them to death. It's uh, sort of a contempt thing more than a hatred thing. Nelson and Rockefeller. Yeah. Nelson Ooh. Rockefeller. Ooh, that's interesting. Answer. That's a weird sort of like dinner party arrangement that you've got Nelson Rockefeller, Henry Kissinger, and Robert E. Lee. <laughs> Just lining one, those though. guys up. Yeah? No, certainly. No, I would feel bad about resurrecting someone from a cemetery where I have relatives buried. <laughs> mm. It's fucked up that you're sort of like, your gift of resurrection is only applied to like someone who you want to make suffer more. Exactly, you know? yes. Right. Mm. <laughs> sort of theologically concerning. Yeah, there's a, there's, there's, there's a theological issue here. <laughs> mm hmm yeah. Someone, someone did this to us again. Okay. Fuck, Mary kill Robert Moses, oh, Santiago fuck. Calatrava, E. Hunter uh -huh. Harrison. We already did this one. Yes. Uh, I, I, I guess I fuck Calatrava here. Yeah, yeah. We're still killing him. Fuck Hunter Harrison. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yes. Do you think the T One Trust Project will take the Speed Crown from the Brits? Uh, if they let it, sure. Yeah, I mean that's mm. the real question: is if they let it. Um. Because you'd have to figure out somewhere to run the damn thing, and that, that is exactly. I've, I've heard that there there are talks about it, but I haven't heard you know any specific plans. Um, you know, because I'm, I'm uh, betting heavily on default once again. Uh, if yeah, the state I, I, of your rail infrastructure doesn't allow this to happen, and Britain ho continues to hold the record just by like default, perfect. Yeah, I, I think that may be the case. Should have been faster in both senses. Shut up. <laughs> what is the best hoagie to get at Wawa? Ideally with specific ordering instructions, because I am in line right now. Oh, I <laughs> uh, fuck. I uh, spicy Italian add pepperoni toast whole thing. A uh, little bit of garlic aioli. Uh, or if you want to feel slutty, I uh, cheesesteak add pepperoni add bacon. Oh, that's an interesting one, yeah. Um, you know, I would have to go with um I mean, I'm generally a fan of, you know, keeping it kind of scent. I I I I like the chicken salad. I like to throw some lettuce and pickles and some hot peppers on there. Uh, also a very good one is if you get the um what is it? The one with the chicken finger hoagie? Yeah, you know, I, I get those some, a lot. Yeah. Yeah, you throw some jalapenos uh, on there. Heart. The they, honey hot ooh, sauce. They, they got do they got Nashville hot now on, on there yeah, now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god. I gotta go there and check it out. I mm -hmm. um you know, there's um I I mean the best hoagie to get at Wawa is to just go through the menu and see what you want. Um also wow, that's fucking helpful ordering so advice. Uh, yeah, explaining exactly. how a restaurant works. Yes. Well, it's no, nearly it's 10. It's a... like 2 in the morning for Alice. <laughs> <laughs> it's ne nearly 2 in the morning. It is 5 to 3 in the morning. Oh, Ow. my God. The, right. the things that I do for this Patreon money, and also for you, my friends... Love you so much. I blame Milkshake. You son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, how much longer do we want to go? Uh, uh, give me three more questions. Three yeah, more questions. That seems fair. Uh, this one is a, a maybe a kind of personal one for Alice, if we can do it. Oh Christ, Alice! Oh, Christ. How did you find Islam? Oh my God! Okay, so I was in this long stage of uh, like nebulously agnostic thing, 
So I was raised Christian mm. and sort of like fell out of that pretty easily. Uh, I was like looking around for something without really knowing that I was looking or what it was for. Um, and ended up reading like a little paperback translation of the Quran that just sort of like grabbed me. There's a, um, it was like an annotated version. There's a hadith in there at the start, and, like a footnote. Um, it's like, uh, Oh, God says, whoever uh, comes near to me by like the breadth of a hand, uh, you know, I'm close to him by like uh, the breadth of an arm. Whoever comes to me walking, I come to him running. Uh, whoever meets me with enough sin to fill the world, I will meet him with as much forgiveness. And that felt like being struck by lightning. So at that point, it wasn't really like a choice or anything I had to think about. It was just like whether or not I was going to post about it. And I post about everything. So. Uh, yeah, from that point, I was just like trying to figure out some manner of practicing what I actually felt in terms of Islam, and that's been ever since pretty much. I'm, I'm pretty bad at it, and like I fuck up a lot, but it's ultimately coming from that sort of like place of untutored, sincere belief. Um, and that's why. Next. I was about to say, someone's going to cancel you on Tumblr for that. Uh <laughs> Probably for, like, horribly misquoting it, because I yes. can't actually remember the thing. But, uh, yeah. Um, um, okay. Um, 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 uh, uh, shit. Will yeah, Justin sure. or Liam convert to Islam with Alice? No, Inshallah, well, I mean, comrades. Sorry, <laughs> you, 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 you just heard my <laughs> elevator pitch, and I don't think it was it was that good. So, I'm oh, well, perfectly happy. <laughs> whatever it is that I am. Uh, we're... fuck! God damn it! I can't even do this one thing. You know. <laughs> no, I mean, I I do want to say that uh, occasionally people have messaged me to say that like. Hey, because of you, I started like reading about Islam. Like I am now Muslim, and that's genuinely like one unambiguously positive thing that I've managed to do with uh, with Islam. It's like, hey, I might fuck up as much as possible, but you know, uh, now I'm like, you gotta you gotta write down all of the other like good shit that this guy did because it's because of me now, you know. So, there yeah. was someone who reached out to me and began the process of converting to Judaism because of me, which I found wow. very kind and a little scary. Mm -hmm. Are we doing well? It's it's, it's like emotional, uh, you know. Did they did they get the hard part over with early, or was that well, like? Uh... Well, I don't want to reveal too much information about this person. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my voice well, it's really is funny. To really I, go. I, I, this I, is fun. I, I'm sure I've told this joke before, but um, uh, so so Muslim Muslims get circumcised as well, right? And uh, so when I I had my first appointment for uh for gender surgery for for the pussy surgery, the surgeon saw that I was Muslim. He's like, "Oh, did you have to get circumcised for that?" And I was like, "I was kind of depending on you to take care of that for me," <laughs> and I was kind of hoping that that would be kind of an irrelevance once you were done with this whole situation. Uh, <laughs> Just a little off the top, and we're ready to go. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. No, I'm 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 in for something more, you know, sort of more conclusive than that. Thank you. I. I just got to say, if someone like DM me and said, hey, I, I converted to Catholicism because of you, I would say, you like, did why? what? Why? <laughs> why? <laughs> Are you going to become one of those weird Tradcath guys? Oh. <laughs> you going to move to Dime Square? <laughs> oh, Christ. All right, here's a good one. Art Deco or Art Nouveau? Art Deco. Ooh, um, I go with Art Nouveau. I'm also with Art Nouveau. I like a I like a good curve. You know. Yes, sure. I need to need to see mm. a, a, a you know a, a bunch of curves and you know maybe a, a a bunch of you know really thoughtfully done wallpapers. Maybe a a poster with an extremely extremely attractive lady on it. You know, I like me a, I like me a nice Gazamkunstwerk. 
You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you wash your mouth out. I, I, legally, everyone is like required once they hit the age of like thirty-five to get one of those uh, Art Nouveau like posters for like Dubonnet or whatever in their house. Yeah. No, like no one remembers why they have it. You just get one, or, or like I one could, of the I, Alphonse Musha Four Seasons things. I could do it six years early, no problem. Yeah, <laughs> give me some um, absinthe. Give me some. Uh, <laughs> give me some uh, architecture that was done entirely on hallucinogens. Yeah. Um, <laughs> some, some Belle Epoque shit, truly. Um, oh hell yeah! Yeah. Favorite dinosaurs or other prehistoric creatures? Megalodon. Mm. Like that I'm not elaborating on any of these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, just like quick fire. Um, I I don't know. I I, I might be trad and say um Triceratops. T Rex is pretty cool too. Mm. Stegosaurus with the Thagomizer. Yeah. A stegosaurus actually seems kind of cool. I might go with stegosaurus. They seem, they seem like they're pretty chill. Um, mm. You know, when they're not fighting someone, um, I would, I would probably, I could probably hang out with a stegosaurus. It's probably, it's more chill than a hippo. I would say it's, it's basically hippos are bastards, man. Yeah. Oh my mm. god, hippos are like they will murder you instantly. Oh yeah, and not even eat you because they're herbivores. They'll just kill you and just leave you there. Yes. Like Cheyenne, if you're gonna kill Wyoming me, at least have the decency. Forty-three like... degrees to ten degrees in thirty minutes. Ah, uh, cool. Actually, okay, so maybe we'll conclude on this one because I think this is an interesting one. Sure. What is the closest any of you all have been to actually experiencing a podcast-worthy disaster firsthand? Huh. Um, I've I've led a very charmed or privileged life right i've as far as i know i've only like come close to dying one time when i like got sort of like had a sailboat capsize on top of me um that wasn't really a disaster though that was just incompetence that was because we didn't know how to sail um you and Roz both although he wrote <laughs> yeah no that was I, a different situation but that is also not my answer <laughs> So sort of geographically closest, I was in like I was in London on seven uh, seven during the tube bombings. Oh wow! Um, like it was the last it was the last day of school, as far as I remember, and we like saw the like ambulances and fire trucks and stuff like scream past on the road outside. Um, but that's not really close. Like it's a big city. I'm. I I I don't know. I think that's I... it. I think that genuinely is it. I used to take the train or the L out to 69th Street Terminal, and I would mm -hmm. transfer to the trolley there to get to Media, Pennsylvania, where my job was. Um, and so 69th Street Terminal, the, the, the L pulls in, all the passengers get off, and it goes on a big loop that's on a bridge, comes back the other way, picks people up on the other platform, right? Um, so one day I was there, and, uh, you know, I get off the train, um, and whoever was driving the L that day had a bit of a lead foot, went up through the loop, and then the train just fell over. Ooh. And I was like, this is the funniest thing I've seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> like, they just derailed the train, train right in front ground. of me. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> It would have been really bad if I was on it, but no one was on it, so it's, it's just really funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, one, presumably one guy was on it, and he had an interesting, an interesting morning. Yeah, but the first car didn't derail. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, see, he just like threw the arse end of the train off the track. No thanks. Behind. Yeah. I am going home. <laughs> <laughs> This is why you need all-wheel drive, you know? Maybe you were right about the Golf R, after all. It was all-wheel drive. Oh, well. Uh, mine is that time I accidentally uh, blew up a still in college. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Did you... I was gonna say, did you did you go to school in like 1920 Atlantic City? What the no. fuck? No, uh, Philly is kind of like that, that, though. Charleston, mm. West Virginia. Uh. <laughs> or like, uh, 
I guess Morgantown's where the college is. Um, yeah. You ever burn any couches? <laughs> <laughs> Have I? Yeah, a couple times, but that's not the point. Uh, well, that's... We should burn a couch sometime. <sighs> When I get out there, we can all three of us burn a couch together. <laughs> um, all right. What's everyone's stamina like? Uh, I more? can do one more. Let's see if we can find a good one. Where's Franklin? Where's Franklin? Oh, God. <laughs> Why aren't you modeling 3D assets for Franklin right now? Because. Alcoholism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nate Buffet See, we... Extended Universe Thunderdome. Who is coming out alive? It's Joe his Buffet name would. on it, and he was in the army. I mean, I guess Joe was too. So that's he's yeah. Yeah, I I think actually yeah, it is Joe Kasabian's coming out. Um, I don't want to fight him. That's that's why he would beat me is I don't want to fight him. <laughs> yeah, I want to like pick fighters, but yeah, it's it's got to be Jar. Well, I think the issue is no one would want to fight each other. Mm. Mm. I'm just I'm I'm doing the British Rail thing. I'm just sitting in the corner, and then yeah. you guys can all kill each other. <laughs> we need we need like a motivation to fight each other here. Yeah. <laughs> It's like all uh, of the Patreon money is in a big transparent plastic yeah, we have, pig. Yeah, one of those one of those things ceiling. where uh, the the thing blows around the money and you have to grab it as fast as possible. Yeah, they that's, make how, us that's do, how we grab uh, Patreon money every month. They make us do Squid Game for the Patreon money. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, Joe also has a TBI, so I don't I don't know how tall is Nate. But that makes like them make more. Right? Yeah, Nate. Nate's. Um, I, I don't have a good image in my head. Like. Met the guy a bunch of times. Don't have a good image in my head for how tall Nace is, but I wouldn't want to fight be, him either. There's going to be like divided alliances here. Joe right? Kasabian you know? is like, as far as I know, like I've met him and he's like six four. Mm. He's, Alice, he's if, you, if you stick with us, I think we can take on the trash boys. <laughs> how tall is Riley? I... Oh, Riley's Riley's also like, <laughs> frankly, alarmingly ripped. Is the problem? Uh, yeah, I don't like that. that. Doesn't necessarily mean anything. I I will say I sure. met Milo last weekend, and I you know I could probably take him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate that we've all gotten into the like squaring up against our co-hosts. Like we might have to do this in the future. <laughs> like how Batman knows all his uh, all his friends' weaknesses just in case. Well, I mean. Lest we forget that, like, uh, not only do we have sort of Joker Sabian on side through you, we also have Devon on our side. Uh, this is a so good point, yes. I, I'm I'll feeling like Dev. our... I mean, huge, enormous, 25 feet. There's... so <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I think our camp is gonna, like, gonna be looking pretty good until we split off into, like, individual fights. Uh, oh, and yeah, then, then, then that's gonna be real ugly, yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah. It's, then it's going to, like... Uh, Dev, Joe, and maybe Nate. I would say. Thank you, Alice. Yeah. Jackass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just. I, I'm just. I call. Are like there I weapons it. involved? That's another question. No. Mm. The Philly fanatic has been deployed <laughs> into the arena as an agent of chaos, XFL style, and will fight whoever he sees. We we are all defeated by the fanatic. <laughs> yeah. This is a, the fanatic standing in top of a pile of our corpses. <laughs> well, <coughs> driving the little I fucking that's... hot dog cart around uh, our dead bodies. I'm gonna I'm gonna thank call you. that. That was question time. Yeah, thank, yeah. You thank you for coming to question time. Thank you for uh, question time. Happy holidays from our podcast to yours. Absolutely, yes. go fuck yourselves. Uh -huh. um, thank you for coming to the war on Christmas. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be back in the new year with more, more stuff, more disasters. We're working disasters on stuff right now. Disasters that hopefully do not involve us. Uh, but sure maybe are. they will. Maybe they will. Yeah, well, yeah. well, I mean, if yeah. any of us die in the line of juicy, the thing that we expect is for picks our up two, his... <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, the pick two up surviving co-hosts <laughs> <laughs> make a podcast episode about our demise. Yes, um, that would be funny. Avenge our deaths. <laughs> <laughs>
I like self reference. Right, the hands of the like, good fanatic. night, good night, good night, good night, good night. All right, I'm, good I'm, night. I'm calling it.